<clears throat> Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Master's House. We are Pastor Jim and Katie Langlois, and all of us that are here, uh, here uh, in person, we're at uh, 8659 Staples Mill Road uh, in Henrico, Virginia, just north of the city of Richmond, right near Staples Mill and Parham Road. And uh, we'd love to have you with us. We start service at 11 o'clock. Yes. And then we have, uh, we have a, a little bit of talking. We've been talking about the Psalms a little bit every, each, each week. And, uh, and then we uh, have praise and worship. And then we go online around 1130-ish, mm -hmm. uh, live on Facebook. And then, uh, and then when we're done, we take that and we post it on our, our uh, YouTube site and also, also on our website uh, to be watched at later times. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we're really glad you're with us. Let's welcome all of those that are online mm -hmm. and with us. And uh, uh, we've had uh, uh, quite a good time recently. We started uh, several weeks ago, uh, March 25th, we taught on Palm Sunday. Remember that? Yes. Palm Sunday. I'm not going to tell you what it's about. You've got to go back and listen to it. Uh, but then on March 31st, we, talk about, we talked about Resurrection Sunday. That was actually mm -hmm. Resurrection Sunday. But we also compared that to the re our resurrection or what we call the rapture. Amen. Go back and listen to that one on March 31st, the s April 14th. We talked about the second coming of Christ, and that's not the same as the first coming, amen? There's a difference between the first and second coming, so go listen to that one. And then last week, we talked about life during the millennium. What is life going to be like during the millennium? And uh, we had quite, a, quite some fun discussing uh, that. It's going to be very, very different. And then today, um, we're going to cover the Great White Throne Judgment. And uh, it's a big thing. That's why it's called great. Somebody say amen. Amen. And as a matter of fact, the word great uh, in the Greek is megas, M-E-G-A-S, and it means great. Hallelujah. About that. And it means big, and it means large. And, uh, and then the word white actually means white. Uh, so there's really no hidden meanings in these words much. It can mean bright, clear, clean, radiant, light, goodly, holy, all kinds of things that it could stand for uh, to represent something also. Uh, but then the th word throne is the Greek word thronos, T-H-R-O-N-O-S, and it means a relatively large and elaborate seat upon which a ruler sits on official occasions. It also means a seat usually high and having a footstool, a throne as the... Uh, um, uh, uh, a throne as the emblem of royal authority. How about that? I like that one. And then there's another uh, definition I found of throne. Uh, a seat attributed to kings. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And, uh, and then the word judgment. Th this is, uh, I got a couple of different words that this means. It means to make a judgment based upon uh, the correctness or value of something. Mm. Another one is to evaluate. And another one is to call in question. So everybody say the great, the great white throne, white throne judgment, judgment. And this is um, uh, the the last great thing that's going to happen before eternity comes into play for all of us. And um, uh, so we're going to talk about that today. And let me read a scripture, and then we'll pray. Jeremiah seventeen ten. Katie can read this one. I like this one. <clears throat> but I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. Oh, read it one more time. <laughs> but I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. That um, could be concerning for some. Yeah, <laughs> could be a big deal. Uh, there's nothing you can keep from God. The secret motives are secret things that you know that no one else knows. God knows all. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And when when we we're gonna find out when, when He means judgment, He's gonna judge us for all things. Mm -hmm. Amen. That need to be judged in our lives, and then uh, He's gonna give people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. So obviously, our actions. Um, are important. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this uh, word. Uh, thank you for the scriptures and the things that you've given uh, us to share. And, and we thank you for the anointing to share it, and the ability to share it. And may it uh, uh, teach us today how to serve you more and more, even more effective. And uh, anyone who's listening to understand God's grace and mercy 
but also his judgment in Jesus' name. Jesus. And everybody Thank said, you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, the great white throne judgment, this is a big deal. It's a really big deal. It's mm-hmm. the, the final and last judgment by God of man and of sin. Amen. Uh, the New Living Translation, we're going to read uh, from Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 through 11 uh, in the New Living. And it had a, 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 a pericope here, or a subtitle here, in the New Living, uh, right at this verse. And it says, the final judgment. Everybody say, the final judgment. The final judgment. Very, very important. Big deal. And go ahead, Katie. You can read there. All right. Revelation 20, 7 through 11. When the thousand years come to an end... Satan will be let out of his prison. He will go out to deceive the nations, called Gog and Magog, in every corner of the earth. He will gather them together for battle, a mighty army, as numberless as sand along the seashore. And we're going to stop right there, and we'll read a little more in this passage. But Gog and Magog, that may get people confused, and and, uh, what does that mean and all. And just there are several different theories on, on what that's referring to. Uh, but the one I liked was that th- that lines up with what we read means he's going to get from Gog and Magog the armies that from the kingdoms that live in, in those areas. And uh, he's going to get all their armies together and he's going to join, they're going to join forces with Satan in an attempt to destroy God's people. Mm-hmm. Now we think what we have right now going on uh, in that area with its attack on God's people and Israel uh, this means that this, the, the, just from all over the area, and, and we really won't go into it, but it really begins in Russia and all through Turkey and all of that are going to be gathered together at one point here uh, in a, a huge attack on, on the God's people in the uh, town or the city of Jerusalem. Somebody say hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's really big. So um, don't let the words Gog and Magog, they're, they're, they are territories, armies, and kingdoms that Satan's going to put together uh, for battle because he does not like God's people. And this is evident, really evident now at this point, yeah. you know. Wow. So let's, uh, we just read, th- um, what did we read, uh, 7 through 8? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's read 9, 10, and 11 of Revelation chapter 20 in the New Living Testimony. Test- New Living Testament. Translation. Translation. I there it is. I had the word. New Living Translation. And I saw them as they went up on the, br- the broad plain of the earth <clears throat> and surrounded God's people and the beloved city. But fire from heaven came down on the attacking armies and consumed them. Then the devil, who had deceived them, was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. There will be tormented... There, they, they Sorry. They... There they will be. There they will be. There they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it. The earth and sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. So uh, it says that the devil who had deceived them. So he had obviously, uh, with Gog and Magog and all of those kingdoms and armies, he deceived them all that we need to get rid of God's people. Amen. Is that happening today, right now? Mm -hmm. It's all over our nation. It's in the colleges everywhere. They don't even know why. But they just say, oh, we've got to destroy and kill all the Israelites, all the Jews. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's just what they're saying, but they don't even know why. (laughs) They don't even know why. And and obviously, the devil's behind all of this. Amen. And he is here. Uh, Of course, this is, uh, I don't think this is quite happening in its fullness yet, Mm -hmm. but it's coming. Amen. And so... It says that um, he gathered and, and uh, when he he gathered and, and encircled the people uh, of God's people and the, the uh, city of Jerusalem, and before any war could take place or anything started, God sends fire from heaven and consumes them all. Mm-hmm. Wow! And the devil, who was in the group, who was uh, let out of the uh, bottomless pit that he was there for a thousand years. Who had deceived them was thrown into the fiery lake being uh, fi- the fiery lake of burning silver sulfur. sulfur joining the beast and the false prophet they were thrown there just at the uh, beginning of the millennium and once you're in the uh, uh, in the lake of fire that's the second death that means once you're in there there's there's no you can't get out that's it. and you're there forever amen uh, the, the lake of fire is the the last thing that uh, anybody wants to go to and and it says right here 
Um, let me read verse 10. Then the devil who deceived them was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. Uh, there they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now there's, there is talk, and some people believe that there is no such thing as hell, and hell is just a t- uh, 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 and, and, and dying for not believing in Christ is just a temporary thing. Once you're dead, you're dead, and it's over. But that's not true. We're, we're all eternal beings, and when you uh, are sent to the fiery lake of fire for, for disbelief and rejection of Christ, it's not just going to, until you burn up and then, then you're gone. And you No, know, it says that you will be there, tormented day and night, forever and ever. A lot of people don't want to believe in that. They say, well, how could a God who's so loving do something like that? Well, we're going to discuss that and make it very clear. Amen? Amen. Mm-hmm. But uh, he saw a great white throne, and on, the one, on that throne, one was sitting on it. The earth and the sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. So this begs the question, well, who is sitting on the great white throne? Most people think it's God. Uh, but no, no, it's not God. It's Jesus. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I'll explain it really quickly right now. <coughs> it's because the king sits on a throne, not the father. A father doesn't sit on a throne. A king sits on a throne. So the father is the father. Father God is the father God, and he never changes. But he appointed Jesus as the king. Jesus is the king. He's the one that's going to appoint judgment, and you'll see that. Um, But it's very interesting. So why? So God the Father can remain God the Father. We need God the Father. How many need God the Father? It's an important thing. This, this word Father being the head is really, really important to us, both spiritually and, uh, and physically and, you know, in our natural life. It's important. Um, it's a big word to be a father. So one sitting on it is Jesus. Amen. He's the judge because he's the word of God made flesh. Amen. Now let's go to a scripture to uh, flesh that out a little bit. In John chapter 12, verse 48, you can read that. He who rejects me, this is red words. Yes, this he is who rejects speaking. me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. Now, this is very important for you to understand is that how can God or Jesus judge people like that? Well, what we're going to find out that the true judge itself is the word. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which is Jesus. Yeah, well, now Jesus is the Word. Yes, that's right. Amen. But it's the Word of God that Jesus abides by that brings the judgment. Amen? All right. Let's go to John chapter 5, verses 22 through 30. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. Because he's Amen. the King and he's mm-hmm. on the throne. Keep going. That all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Good point, but here's, it says here, he who hears what? Hears me, my word. My word, very, just just make sure we log that in. He who hears my my word. word. And believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. Amen? Yeah. And shall not come into judgment. Judgment, but has passed from death into life. And you keep going. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the son of man. So the one who's executing judgment is Jesus. Amen. But the one that's bringing in the punishment, the actual punishment and, and, and to be paid is the law, mm-hmm. which is yeah, the, the word. Mm-hmm. All Jesus is doing is speaking the word. So he mm-hmm. says, or the law. He says, you're judged by the law. Go ahead. Verse 28, do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can do of my, I'm sorry, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Isn't that fascinating? 
So they are just, uh, it, the word is God's word. Mm -hmm. And of course, Jesus is the manifestation of that. But they both have to adhere to the law of the word that was written. Amen. That's Amen. the most important thing. And so just keep that in mind. Matthew 25, 31 through 46. I'll read this one, give you a little break. Thanks. Red print again. Yes. Uh, in the New King James Version. It says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. This is another scripture that proves that Jesus is the one on the throne because it says when the Son of Man comes, he will sit on the throne. Right. Make sense? Yes. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from uh, one from another. I, I'm, let me say that again. He will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats, and he will set the sheep on his right hand, uh, but the goats on the left. Mm -hmm. Then the king, that's the one who has that right to sit on the throne, he has the authority to bring judgment, will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, I'm going to say this a little differently. When did we serve you in this way? I'm going to read it for what it says in a minute, but I'm going to say this. You could say it this way. Lord, when did we serve you in this way? So say that after me. Lord, Lord when did we serve you, when did we serve you in this way? In this, this is an way. important thing to know. He says, for, uh, he says um, uh, right, here. right down here. Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in? Or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick and, or in prison or, and, and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Mm -hmm. Now, he will say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. There's the lake of fire. For I was hungry, and you, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. And they will also answer him and say, When did we see you? Where, where, was, where, where were you? Where, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? And he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, then you did not serve me. Okay. I could say it that way. It all has to do with who served God, who served the Lord during their lifetime, and who didn't serve the Lord during their lifetime. Go ahead. Well, I think it's interesting, though, that one side said Lord and the other side said Lord. Both sides said Lord. Even the ones that uh, they didn't, they said, well, when did we not serve you? You know, or when did we, it's just, they, they are, it's very, very interesting. And this is what he says, Surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to the, uh, one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And the last verse we'll read is verse 46. And these will go away into everlasting punishment. Everlasting, everlasting. that doesn't mean just for them to die and it's over. Everlasting, but the righteous into eternal life. Amen. Isn't that interesting? So who's sitting on the throne? Jesus. Jesus is. How is he judging? By the By word. The word. Yeah. He's just following the, the law. That's all he's doing. He's not making the law. He is the law. Mm -hmm. he was, and he knows what it is. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20, verses 12 through 15, New Living <coughs> Translation. We'll get a picture of what's going on at the great white throne judgment here. You can read that. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were opened, including the book of life, and the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead, and all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire, this lake of fire is the second death, and anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. This is fascinating. There's some books, obviously, 
uh, that are going to be opened when the dead, that means those who weren't serving God. This isn't a judgment for the righteous. No. We've already been judged. Right. We've been judged at the, at the judge, uh, just judgment seat of Christ, Amen. and we've been judged righteous and holy through his blood. Amen. And we've been rewarded there, it says, for the things that we did in serving him. Mm -hmm. Now, those things that we did didn't get us to heaven, but we still get rewarded for the things that we did while we serve Jesus on this planet. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so, here, there's these books. The books were opened, including the book of life, and the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. This means there's a lot of books on one side, and in all those books, every one of those dead people that are standing, or the, the unbelievers standing before Jesus at that time, he could open any of the book and find out, remember what the scripture says, all their secrets when they rejected Christ, what they did, what they didn't do, it's all recorded in the book. And he could say, okay, well, the reason that um, uh, you're going to have to go to the left side is because look at June 5th, 1944. Look at this, look at that, look at this. And here you went to church and you were given ch a chance. You were at the master's house that day and uh, Pastor Jim gave a message to receive Christ and you walked out, you, didn't, you rejected me at that time. Why did you do that? Well, I, 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 I didn't want to serve you. Ah, okay. And then the other ones that say, well, well why am I here? I mean, I mean uh, we, 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 we cast out devils. We did, we did crazy, you know, things like that. When did we serve you? He says, no, you don't even know me. You didn't even know me. No, you weren't serving me. You were serving yourself. Because oh, let me show you in the books. I got all the books. Uh, give me a book, uh, whatever it is. <laughs> give me Joe's book, 1948, on uh, June 5th. I want to show him that. You know, so he, he, he can't deny all the truth is there in the books. But then there's this one book, the book of life. Why is that book there? I, I thought it really doesn't need to be there uh, because their names are not written in the book. They're only our names, only the righteous names are in the book of life. They're there. So why is that at this point at the great white throne judgment? It's because when, when, when Billy speaks up and says, well, I'll tell you what, I know what Jim Langwa did. I remember that. I remember that, what Jim Langwa did. Why is, why is his name in the book and my name's not? They said, well, let me show you James's book. He served me, and because it's not in just what you hear, but faith without works is dead. He had works of faith. He believed, he received, and he received my gift. And that's why his name is there. Well, I don't think his name should be there. Well, his name is there and yours isn't. <laughs> Off to the left you go. All the proof is there. It's all there. We don't need to see the book of life. We've already been in heaven for seven years of tribulation. We've already been on the earth ruling and reigning with Christ for a thousand years. So a thousand and seven years, we've been having an eternal body, serving God, and, and been at the marriage supper of the Lamb, been at the judgment seat of Christ, and we don't need, we're not here. There's no mention of believers being at the great white throne judgment. We might be, I don't know if we're there or not, but there's no mention of us being there. I heard this, this is kind of interesting. Um... Uh, I'll, I'll write this one. This, this is interesting. Where does the great white throne judgment take place? That's the question I want to ask. And um, I heard this from uh, David Jeremiah. Jeremiah. David Jeremiah. He said this. Let me read it to you. In, in answering to the where does the great white throne judgment take place, he said most likely somewhere between heaven and hell. Because judgment has yet to take place and no sinner can enter heaven at any time. So the, pe the people that are being judged as sinners, they can't go to heaven to be judged at a white throne. So he's saying it's probably between heaven and hell. Maybe, maybe hell's to the left and heaven's to the right, but they're between the two. Isn't that interesting? Just a thought as to where it is. So, the righteous are not mentioned at all during the great white throne judgment. Why? Because they've already been judged at the judgment seat of Christ, where they were judged righteous and rewarded for the good works they did for Christ here on the earth. But as we know, the scriptures that we've seen, it's all been, done, been spoken. Well, when did you serve me, is when the question Jesus is asking them. When did you serve me at all? Now, we know you're not, you don't serve him 
to get saved. Amen. But if you are saved, you'll serve him. Somebody say amen. 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 God knows the intents and, and, and beliefs in the heart. Amen. amen. So uh, I wrote this down. Are they the saints at the great white throne judgment? Maybe, maybe not, but it does not say. However, the only ones judged are those who rejected Christ. Because our judgment, our judgment has already taken place and we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 2. Romans five, chapter 2, 5 through 11, New Living Translation. This is what Paul writes about this. But because you are stubborn and refuse to turn from your sin, you are storing up terrible punishment for yourself. For a day of anger is coming when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. He will judge everyone according to what they have done. What have they done? Yeah. He will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good, seeking after the glory and honor and immortality that God offers. But he will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves, who refuse to obey the truth and instead live lives of wickedness. There will be trouble and calamity for everyone who keeps on doing what is evil, for the Jew first and also for the Gentile. But there will be glory and honor and peace from God for all who do good, for the Jew first and also for the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. Very interesting translation of that. But let's go to one more tough scripture in Matthew 7, 21 through 27, New Living Translation. I'll read this. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, and we already saw that in Scripture, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name, but I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's law. Here's an interesting note from the King James Version Study Bible on that particular passage. Katie, you could read that. Um, the Study Bible says, Not everyone professing Christ is genuinely saved. Even the outward verbal acknowledgement of his lordship is in itself not enough to save the unbeliever apart from true repentance and faith. A genuinely saved person is one that doeth the will of my Father, the Greek present tense suggesting that he is continually living in obedience to the will of God as the normal course of his life. And that would explain why both sides said Lord. Yeah, yeah. And, and we just read um, 21 through 23 of Matthew 7. Let's go to verse 24. And we'll read through 27. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. So it's a good question. When did you serve me, you who think you deserve to go to heaven? isn't it? James chapter 1 verse 22, I'll read this one, very familiar. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves, says faith without works is dead. Mm. Ligonier Ministries, I'll read this one. Scripture does not teach that there will be a judgment of our works and that our service to Christ, no, did I read that wrong? does teach. I, did I say does not I don't, teach? I don't, I'm I, not I, I don't sure. know how I read it. Let Try me read again. it again. Try again. Back up. Scripture rewind. Scripture does teach that there will be a judgment of our works That's right. and that our service to Christ will be rewarded. But notice that the determining factor for regarding one's presence in heaven or hell for regarding one's presence in heaven or hell is not works, but whether one's name is in the Amen. book of life. Amen. This must be so, for we know that we do not merit, possess, or inherit eternal life by our works, but only through faith in Christ Amen. alone. Yeah. It's very important. But you can also see an evidence of your true faith is in the things that you do. Yeah. Amen. 
Yeah. And that was what we, we read so many scriptures about. What have you done? What are you doing? What have you done? What are you doing? Because uh, uh, faith without works is dead. It's just an outward experience. There should be something we can tell. Oh, we can tell Jesus is your Lord, you know. Yeah. Everyone whose name is not found in the book of life is cast into the lake of fire, along with death and Hades, the dragon being Satan, and the beasts from the land and the sea. No evil thing will escape eternal punishment. Scripture teaches us in many places that eternal life comes only through faith in Christ, but that the specific rewards we receive in life to come differ according to our works. Mm -hmm. Our works by no means get us into heaven, but in heaven God rewards our works, and the greater our works, the greater our reward in glory. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. But the Word is the judge. Say that after me. The Word, the word. is the judge. the judge. Katie, read Revelation 16, 1 through 2, King James, or New King James. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth. And a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. I struggled with this verse um, and really prayed for a while for the Lord to reveal to me about the seven bowls that the angels brought out of heaven and poured out on the earth during the tribulation. Now that's one section that we're really not teaching on in this series <coughs> is the tribulation. That's a whole nother uh, ball game there, mm -hmm. but I just didn't feel led to teach on the tribulation this time. But this is coming out of the tribulation period, the, the, the seven years, where seven angels come out of heaven and one at a time pour the, their bowls upon the earth and different plagues and different things happen. And uh, so it says in Revelation 16, 1 through 2, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worship his image. So I, I said, Lord, I said, um, did the angels have sickness and disease in their bowl? Then that's when they poured that bowl on them, they became sick. And I said, I, I, don't, I don't think there's any sickness in heaven how could they come out of heaven with a bowl of of uh, what what happened here sickness the, and disease yeah. foul and loathsome sores yeah. and they pour that thing on the on the people and all the people get sore and loathsome sores and so uh but god gave me a revelation that helped me and um and and this is the fact that what's in the bowl isn't sickness and disease it's the word of god the word of god is in the bowl and when they poured that down it created the judgment the judgment was if you're not receiving of christ then you reap the law of sin and death and that there's something that people chose and so the angels didn't bring sickness out of heaven they just brought the judgment the of word. the word and yeah. once that judgment came out and it hit them then the curse of the law manifested in their life mm -hmm. do you have something you want to say Doesn't they follow along with the seven plagues of egypt Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Yeah. Those things didn't come from God, but he allowed this to happen. Wrong. But when the judgment came and said, if you don't receive me, you're going to be in a lake of fire forever. Or, yeah. and so, And these judgments came out of the... Out of the and there, there are also the trumpets and so many things in, in, the, in this. But what, that really relieved me. Oh, wow. So sickness is not coming from heaven on those people. It's the word of God that said, if you, because you haven't repented, because you haven't received the law... Uh, or, or receive Jesus, then the, the curse belongs to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's your judgment. And so, as obviously, the mm -hmm. curse manifests in many ways. There were seven different things that happened in, mm -hmm. at this time. And so, that relieved me. Oh, God didn't pour sickness on people. No. He didn't have sickness to pour on people. Mm -mm. Isn't that good? So, I wrote this. There's no sickness in heaven, and there's no sickness in the bowl. The bowl is the word of God pronouncing judgment. And it falls upon those who refuse God's grace and mercy through his sacrifice for their sins. The word's judgment is the curse of the law. Isn't that something? It's just like a judge in court today. The judge determines the sentence of the guilty party by what's written in the law. 
And the law carries out the sentence. The judge doesn't take you to and, and put you in, in jail or in court or anything. He just reads the law. You're guilty with this. This is the law. And I pronounce that. So the law takes you beyond the, the judge into where you have to go. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. That's if the judge is hopefully following the law right. appropriately. You want to have, make sure you have a good judge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're praying for that. And... Uh, and so that judges according to the law, and we're looking for also God's uh, 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 mercy and grace mm -hmm. from the from the judgment in there too, which can is beautiful to take place. But uh, there is no mercy and grace for those who don't receive Jesus. Amen. So God isn't sending anyone to hell for eternal punishment. Rather, everyone has the choice to make for eternal life or eternal death. Amen. It's what they choose. Is what comes out of that bowl. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Read in Second Corinthians 6, 2, Katie. For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And so everybody online and everybody here, we, we've got to understand that we really don't want to wait for a better day mm -mm. to receive Jesus. Mm -mm. Because the next thing to happen is the rapture. It could happen right now. And if you're not ready, and if you haven't received Jesus as your Lord, the mm -hmm. word will judge that. Mm -hmm. You'll be beyond the court case. Mm -hmm. And so now's the time. Now's the accepted time. Now's the day to receive Christ to be saved. It's the yeah. day of salvation. He paid the price for you, and you have to accept it to, for it to be yours. Amen? Mm -hmm. So the most important question is, same one we had last week, are you ready for the rapture of the saints? It could happen at any moment in the twinkling of an eye. I got a couple notes we're going to read to finish this out. And this came from an article I found online. You can read that, Katie. There are many who refuse to accept the teaching of death and hell and judgment, choosing rather to believe that God is a God of love and would not refuse any decent human being a place in heaven. To their way of thinking, God would never condemn anyone to a place of eternal torment. But the fact of the matter is, it's not God who determines a person's eternal destiny. Right. Each of us determine our own eternal state based upon our acceptance or our rejection of Jesus Christ. Those who reject Christ condemn themselves to Amen. eternal destruction. I'll read the next paragraph. This is a good note here. Paul said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you stand before the Lord in judgment at the great white throne, it will be because you rejected the free gift yes. of God's salvation. Amen. You'll have no one to blame but, just, but yourself. Yeah. I thought, boy, that's a direct word. And then, no, go ahead. Well, I was just thinking, you know, you and I this week talked about ownership. Mm -hmm. And um, he had a kid on the bus that, you know, said, well, you don't want me to ride your bus anymore. Yeah. And... And he's sitting there going, you know, how do I respond to that? And I said, no, no, it's his ownership of his choices. I want you to ride the bus. You decided you didn't want to ride the bus anymore by the choices that you made. So it really has nothing to do with me. Yeah. It has everything to do with you don't want to ride my bus anymore. I'm offering you this free ride. I'm offering you this great transportation with humor. And... You are choosing not to ride the bus. So, no, that's, that's all on you, not on me. Yeah, because of your poor choices, you're being kicked off the bus. And it's the same way here. Somebody would love to blame God for, you know, eternal damnation. Mm -hmm. That's what they would love to do because ownership is hard. But the thing is, is we have to take ownership mm. for our choices. So, you know, we have the, the official say in where our destiny lies. It's really awesome. Uh, you'll have no one to blame but yourself. Right. And I want to go back to the first scripture that we opened with, Jeremiah 17.10. And uh, Katie read that in the beginning. Read it one more time, New Living Translation. But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. Mm, Amen. Mm, mm, mm. And, and we're not going to change that. But we can receive his grace mm -hmm. and be forgiven and then turn to heaven, and he'll pay the price for us. It's a free gift. Isn't that awesome? Can you turn mine? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> my batteries just went dead. I'm sorry, everybody. My battery just went dead in my, uh, my mic, and it 
doesn't like it when that happens. Thank you. I thought it was the rapture. No, we're still here. <laughs> All right, yeah. let's go back to the verse before uh, that happened. But I, the Lord, search all hearts and exam, examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. And uh, thank God for his grace and mercy through Christ. Can somebody say amen? Amen. And so this is a tough message, the great white throne judgment. But it is great. And it's white for some reason. And for, you know, I think it's because it's a holy event. Yeah. Amen. And it's a throne because the king is seated on the throne. And it's judgment because that's exactly what it is it's judgment uh for those that haven't received christ amen. amen amen and if there's anyone online or here and you've never called upon the name of the lord to be saved you need to receive jesus now don't wait a second pray this prayer after me say jesus jesus come into my heart come into my heart and be my lord and be my lord i repent i repent of my sins of my sins forgive me forgive me and save me and save me i call you i call you my lord my lord in jesus name in jesus name amen amen and now if you prayed that and meant it the bible says for all who call upon the name of the lord shall be saved pastor jim is it really that easy well yes but you got to believe it <laughs> it is you have to believe what the word of god says and the word of god says here's the law for all who call upon the name of the lord mm -hmm. shall be saved amen period yeah jew or gentile and isn't that awesome yeah and so uh i'm not going to be there at the great white throne judgment as far as i can tell and i'm really glad and uh, i'm going to continue to serve christ all my life i've been doing it what 43 years now have ever made a mistake sure Sure, but that's what repentance is, is about. Repentance. And, and the life, living for Christ, is a lifetime of always serving him and making adjustments to serve him in the correct way. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Do you have anything you'd like to say? All right, so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this message, but I think we could end with communion right now. Yes, agreed. So uh, if we could go ahead and distribute the elements of communion here. I forgot to mention at the beginning. You did. Oh, it's okay. That we're going to have communion. So if you're watching online or you're watching this at home, uh, you could hit pause at home if you're, if you're watching this at a later date. Absolutely. But um, get some water or some crackers or some juice or something like that. Kennard, could you go ahead and distribute it? And... Um, and we're going to serve communion. One thing I want to mention about communion is that um, it is truly an end time event. We live in the end times. And uh, we're told to observe communion until Jesus returns. Let's go uh, to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. And he says, uh, well, you could read. You want to read this one? Sure. All right. Give me just a second. And say this after me. Communion, Communion is an end time event. Is an end time event. Good. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. That last verse there is, is what I want to concentrate on today, that every time we eat the bread and drink the cup, we're announcing something. Mm -hmm. We're announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's his second coming. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so he's come once and he's going to be coming again. We've studied that and it's good. And so um, uh, this is why we do it as a regular basis. Because it's an end time event. He's coming back. Everybody say he's coming back. He's coming back. Father, we thank you for this time and communion. We thank you. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we thank you that uh, you said that uh, by your stripes we are healed. Thank you, Lord. And your body is the bread of life. Thank you, Lord. And so uh, we say that uh, we are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Yes. And healing and provision is uh, ours. Thank you, Lord. Uh, you are the one who provides for us, and we thank you for that, for everything that we need in this life, thank you, in the Lord. natural. Yeah. But also, through your blood, we've been redeemed, we've been washed, we've been cleansed by the blood. Thank There's you, no Lord. sin. We're fully righteous, and uh, we fully belong to uh, heaven and the uh, kingdom of God. 
And so we thank you for the body and the blood, and we take the bread right now. Let's go ahead and take that. Mm -hmm. Saying that this is your body, which is broken for us, to do this in remembrance of you, and yes, you are coming back soon. So we eat it saying this belongs to us. We are provided for, we are healed, and we are redeemed through you, your body and blood in Jesus' name. Go ahead and take the bread. And then after supper, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, and this do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Again, it's an end time event, communion. And we will continue to do this on a regular basis because we're waiting for the Lord to return in Jesus' name. Thanks for your blood. Thank you for your blood. Thank you that we're washed and cleansed, and we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Amen. Go ahead. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Well, we had a lot of scripture, mm -hmm. a lot of things to think about Thank there you, concerning, I think we covered the great white throne judgment very good, mm -hmm. and it's not something to fear for us, mm -mm. but it's something that should motivate us to serve him. Amen? Amen. And uh, don't forget, we're rewarded for the things that we've done in this life for his kingdom. Amen. So don't give up. Don't stop. Keep serving the God, uh, serving God for what you do on your job, with your friends, where you are, and uh, God's going to reward you for the things that you've done for His kingdom. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, Hallelujah. One thing that we can do is uh, support His kingdom financially. Mm -hmm. uh, I love doing that, uh, and this is why the church receives offerings, is so we can spread the gospel all around the world mm -hmm. in written materials and books and things which we have and we do. And we can do missions and help missions and, and here, spread the gospel here, mm -hmm. preach the gospel. Yeah. We also broadcast the gospel uh, uh, live on Facebook mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to reach those for Jesus. And so uh, God has set up different uh, ways of giving, uh, like we can have missionary giving. Mm -hmm. We can have tithes and offerings uh, for the church. We can have uh, alms to help people in the poor. And so I want to thank all the, uh, who uh, support the Master's House. Uh, financially and without your support we wouldn't be able to do what we do so we also have a lamb's basket mm -hmm. which uh, people can bring food here canned goods and different uh, uh, food that can be used in the food pantry we'll take that over to the uh, uh, lamb's basket uh, food pantry and they help uh, the whole area here mm -hmm. with those who need food and clothing and things like that so uh, we also have a missionary every month and Dwayne and Leah Norman came and preached at the first part of this month. Mm -hmm. This is the last Sunday that we're going to uh, receive uh, any funds marked missions will go directly to their ministry. So for the whole month, any, any giving marked missions goes to Dwayne and Norman, uh, Dwayne, Dwayne and, and Leah, Leah Norman, Norman. <laughs> uh, for their ministry. And uh, uh, they're, they're our missionaries of the month. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate that. Um, and um, how can they give? All right, so there are a couple different ways. Um, one of the first ways is to go to our website, which is tmhnow.org, um, and we use the Tithely platform, so you can go ahead and indicate where your gift is going um, through that platform on our website. Uh, you can also download that Tithely, dot, or Tithely app, right? Yeah. yeah Tithely, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y, on any device, and you can give. Uh, just make sure you're giving to the Master's House um, in Mechanicsville, and if you would like to um, give versus like the United States Postal Service, you can send it to P.O. Box 1568, Mechanicsville, Virginia, 23116. Yep. And, and if you're uh, here, there's a black box and envelopes at the back. Yeah, right back there. So let's go ahead and pray over our offering and our giving. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. Thank you to, that we can actually uh, use our uh, finances that we have uh, to change the world and to spread the gospel around the world that people might be saved and healed. And so we offer this to you, uh, you. to the support of the church and the missions and the word that's going around the world. Use it, Lord, uh, to bring glory to your kingdom yes, and we Lord. give by faith in Jesus' in name. Jesus and everybody name. said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. And uh, how would they find out more about our church? All right. So you can connect with us on Facebook at TMH Now. Um, you can also see previous messages on YouTube, TMH RVA. Um, you can check out our family BibleRevolution.com website, yeah, go um, which will give you more information about what we do on Tuesday nights, which is our Zoom family worship. And we meet every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Zoom. Um, what you can do is log into tmhnow.org or familybiblerevolution.com. Go to the calendar tab and click on that specific dated Tuesday. And the link is there so that you can log in with all the credentials. But we just meet for about 40 minutes. We discuss, we pray, we talk, we uh, we laugh. It's a lot of good times. So join it. us. Yes, it's really so great. much fun. It's I, only 40 I minutes. I recommend you be there. You'll, your life will be changed. It's awesome. Minute. Yeah. Well, let me pray for those that are online. We're going to say goodbye to you all, and we might spend here a few minutes discussing what we learned in the message and what it meant to us. Mm -hmm. So, Father, I thank you for all those who are joining Thanks online Lord. today yeah. and in the days in the future, and we pray for you uh, for a blessing, mm -hmm. prosperity, health, and wealth, thank you, Lord. and uh, all your needs are met by his riches and glory. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. and we'd love to see you next time. In Jesus' name, yes. everybody say goodbye. Thank you. Bye.